Warning, viewer discretion is advised. The following is not for the faint of heart. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank those who have been liking our videos and subscribing. We highly appreciate you supporting the channel. On July 30th, 2008, Tim McLean boarded a Greyhound bus to return home to Winnipeg. Tim was an active athlete and a beloved son, father, brother, and uncle. He was known as an adventurous person who loved traveling and meeting new people. Tim picked a seat towards the back of the Greyhound bus, where he planned to sit for the duration of the trip. Vince Wei Guang was another passenger on this Greyhound, originally sitting in another seat. He randomly changed his seat to sit alongside Tim McLean for no apparent reason. Neither of the two men seemed to know each other and did not converse in conversation. Tim quietly sat with his headphones on playing music, while he slowly nodded off to sleep with his head against the window. Within five minutes of falling asleep, Tim was awakened by a strong, sharp pain in his neck. This unbearable pain was Vince's combat knife, impaling Tim's neck. An eyewitness from the bus incident stated that he believed the two may have broken out into a fight, and he did not know what to make of it. Next thing I know, I hear somebody scream, and I look back, and there's some big guy holding this little fella up against, like, between the bathroom door and the seat, and it, we, he was moving. It kind of looked like a fight, but somebody said a knife, so we all run off the bus. He was getting stabbed. I was just reading a book. All of a sudden, I heard a guy screaming. I turned around, and the guy sitting right be next beside me was standing up and stabbing another guy with a big a Rambo knife, pretty much. It was a big survival knife like this in the throat, repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. The bus erupted with a mixture of screaming and hollering from both the passengers and Tim. Vince continued to brutally stab Tim in his neck and chest, over and over with no remorse or emotion. Tim struggled and attempted to escape, but Vince continued to stab him. A night witness said Tim had a blood-curdling scream, described as something in between a dog howling and a baby crying. Just reading my book and all of a sudden I heard it, it was like something uh, between a dog howling and a baby crying, I guess you could say it was... I don't think I'll, it'll be... It'll leave me for a while. Uh, after, I don't know, five or six stabs, I think he must have got him in the throat because we didn't hear him anymore. Is there a, a lot of blood? Yeah, there was blood everywhere. There was blood spurring. Uh, the, the, the floor of the bus is covered in blood. Passengers in the bus rushed towards the entrance to escape. Many passengers were screaming, crying, and vomiting while others were in shock. As passengers were frantically rushing out of the bus, Vin seemed unbothered by the incident, almost as if it was just another day. He looked like he was having a stroll on the beach, with no emotions. Vince grabbed Tim's head and began violently hacking away at his neck, fully decapitating Tim's head from his torso. Blood spewed in every direction, filling every crevice of the bus seat. Puddles of blood began to fill the bus as the hollering passengers ran out. A truck driver stopped to help when he saw the passengers on the side of the highway. He helped barricade the door to keep Vince inside the bus while authorities arrived. The guy was totally calm and when he, when he came and he brought the, the head and he looked at us and dropped the head, it was just like he, like he was at, having a day at the beach. Like, he couldn't be bothered by anything else. RCMP arrived with special negotiators and a heavily armed tactical unit. When Vince was requested to drop the knife by the police, he responded with unintelligible words and continued to mutilate Tim's body and face. He used a pair of scissors and a combat knife to cut organs out and pieces of flesh from Tim's body and head. Vince would then smell the pieces of flesh and eat them while licking the blood from his fingers. Vince then began to throw pieces of organs that he cut out and put them into a white plastic trash bag. The police and passengers spectated in horror while Vince was pacing inside of the bus holding Tim's head. I uh, ran up to the door to, to maybe see if the, the guy was still alive or we could help or something like that. And when we all got up, we seen that the guy was cutting off the guy's head. Uh, it was at that point that he came, started walking to the front of the bus and he had a, the, the head in his hand. And he just looked at us like this and, and dropped it on the ground, but totally calm. And then they braced the door and he come back. Uh, standing in the doorway was the head looked at him, dropped the head, went back and started cutting Buddy back up, right? He, he comes up and he picks the head up and he's waving it in the window. I just smoked a cigarette with this man earlier, right? The, the head. And he's shaking it back and forth at the window and it's really intense, right? It's sickening. And I was just making sure. I wasn't worried about myself at the time. I was just worried about everybody else being okay, right? 
It took five hours to arrest Vince at approximately 1.20 a.m. Vince broke open a window on the bus, threw out some personal belongings, a knife, and a pair of scissors, and jumped out of the bus, head first landing on top of the knife. RCMP members immediately tried to apprehend him. He was struggling, screaming, and refused to surrender his hands. Police stunned him with a taser on several locations before he surrendered his hands, and he can be handcuffed and taken to a police vehicle. Found in Vince's pants pocket was the plastic bag containing Tim McLean's ear, nose, and tongue. A variety of Tim McLean's body parts and organs were found throughout the bus. The tip of the blade was located in Tim's skull in the forehead area just above the inner aspect of the right eyebrow. The autopsy revealed that Tim McLean's cause of death was multiple stab wounds. The body of Tim McLean showed evidence of damage in excess of 100 areas, ranging from abrasions to a large gaping wound in the chest. The eyes were missing and not recovered, presumed that Vince ate them. The internal organs were recovered in plastic bags in four separate areas of the bus. One third of Tim's heart was never recovered, and it is presumed that Vince ate it. Vince was charged with second degree murder and found not criminally responsible due to a mental illness, schizophrenia. Vince stated he heard the voice of God telling him to kill the young man or die immediately. Vince believed Tim was an alien and he was doing the work of God by killing him and protecting the other passengers on the bus. Vince had bought the knife from a store called the Canadian Tire. I bought it for any emergency for the journey to protect myself from the aliens. I was really scared. I remember cutting off his head. I believed he was an alien. The voices told me to kill him, that he would kill me or others. Vince was originally kept in a secure wing at the Selkirk Mental Health Center, but the board granted him increasing freedoms almost every year due to good behavior and responding well to treatment. In 2016, he was permitted to move into independent living, but he had to abide by certain rules, which included taking medications and attending counseling appointments. On the 10th of February 2017, Vince was granted an absolute discharge. The Manitoba Criminal Code Review Board ordered the discharge, stating Vince, now known as Will Lee Baker, does not pose a significant safety threat to the public. Vince now walks a free citizen. Vince Lee now goes under the name Will Baker, a diagnosed schizophrenic. He's been under court-ordered psychiatric care since 2009. Baker, seen here leaving court, is applying for an absolute discharge. That means his treatment would no longer be overseen by the courts. Baker was found not criminally responsible after he beheaded Tim McLean on a Greyhound bust just west of Portage La Prairie in 2008. He's been in institutional care and now lives on his own under limited supervision. Today, a psychiatrist said Baker is responding to medication and treatment and shows no signs of wanting to stop and poses little risk to the public. I was just mad and I was mad and I didn't really know exactly what I was mad about. And I was mad that the world just kept going on like nothing happened. Nothing changed for everybody else. It just, the traffic still went, the sun still shone. And it was so maddening to me that that the whole world didn't just stop. Mine did. If you found the video interesting, please help support the channel by liking, sharing, and or subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you and I hope you have a safe day.